Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I just stumbled across something uh, that Greg Knuckles wrote. He is someone I get along with. I like his work. I really appreciate the information he puts out. Fantastic power lifter, fantastic coach. He's also working on his graduate degree in exercise science right now. It seems like he got into a little bit of a debate with Lyle McDonald. As you guys know, I am a supporter of Bulgarian style training, or at least Bulgarian light as we call it. There's some debate there, and a lot of you who are interested in this type of training might want to see both sides of the picture because Greg recently put out a book on the topic of using Bulgarian training for powerlifting and other type sports. Lyle didn't like it. Lyle attacked it. He raised a bunch of points and Greg created a good counter argument. And uh, essentially what this boils down to is understanding that what everyone understands who uses Bulgarian light is that yes, true Bulgarian training as it was done <laughs> by the Bulgarians is only suitable for people who are on very large amounts of drugs who probably have really good genetics and do not have jobs. That They are professional full-time athletes with no other responsibilities. That isn't subject to debate. That doesn't mean that the basic principles of it haven't been successfully applied by many people to other strength sports and other endeavors. And even in some cases, employed successfully by laymen who just want to get a lot stronger on a few basic lifts. It's a sound principle. It works. There are a lot of coaches, a lot of people who have graduate degrees in sports physiology who support this. And it's been shown to be effective. It works. But the thing is, is that it has to be custom tailored to the needs of the individual. If you're putting someone on this type of training who isn't on drugs, yes, you have to scale the volume back. Yes, you have to pay a little more attention to certain things. If they have normal jobs, yes, they can't do all that. And no, no one who doesn't meet that criteria can come in and be training three times a day, hitting training maxes three times a day, six days a week. If they're gonna burn out, it's not going to work, but there's no reason that people can't come in and do daily training maxes four to six days a week on their primary lifts that they're most focused on with a minimal amount of accessory work and get a lot stronger very quickly with drugs, without drugs, whatever it happens to be. It's just that people need to understand that these things need to be custom tailored a little bit to the needs of the individual and to the individual sport. And that's the gist of what Greg's argument is, but I think anyone who's interested in this topic of strength training should probably check out both articles and see both sides of the argument decide for yourself. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.